further discussion about the minutes? Yes, sir. Brian? Can you hear Brian? Yes. How about you, Eric? I don't see Eric on there. We've got Judy and Brian and Gary and myself. Let's try to find Eric, see if we can get him back on. So I have a I'm question about, about the minutes. Eric. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Brian. So does the chairman of the board get two votes? I should, shouldn't I? <laughs> well, according to the motions, the first, second, and third, and fourth, your name's twice and mine's not there. Ah, good catch. Yes, I see that. That's under Copley Trust. Yes, sir. Thanks for that. Is there anything else? All in favor by roll call, Judy? Yes. Eric? Yes. Brian? Yes. Gary? Yes. Any nays? No. It's moved. It's passed, I mean. All right, next. Community concerns, Is there any community concerns out there tonight? Anybody in uh, cyberspace got any concerns <laughs> besides our problem with our audio visual? Hearing none. Old business. Review and approve zoning bylaw changes. Todd, you want to speak about that? Can you hear me, Todd? At least you can't hear me. You, you're muted, at least. I, I can hear you, but Todd, I can't hear Todd either. Yeah, okay. Todd's going to call in. Thanks, Elise. We're having some problems here tonight. Apparently, it's a new year. Yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be better this year. It's kind of like the Y2K2000. <clears throat> exactly. Can we hear me now? Yes, Todd. Do you I'm want to sorry work? about that. Yeah, you want to speak about I have three computers in front of me, and I found one that works. Great. So zoning changes. We had a hearing back in December. Uh, the zoning change, this is the one the select board uh, required to go through for Fairwood Parkway. There's a few other small items with it. A uh, few may warrant further discussion. Um, let's let me pull up the zoning right now. I had it up, but I had to close it to go on to my other device to get audio. Hold on one second. And it's open right now. So I'm looking at the hearing notice. I'll just go through again real quickly. Uh, on the hearing notice, which is page one, which the select board has, uh, allow class two development industrial zone two, which is Hool Ave frontage east. That's pretty much housekeeping. Uh, number B, uh, which is section 340, add steep slope protection, 20% or more to environmental resource areas. I think there is a public comment on that. So uh, I'm not sure how if you wanna go take public comments as they go, Bob, or want me to go through the list and then open it up? What do you want to do? I think we could just open up the public comment um, and see what we get. Sure. So I know, I think Tyler's on the call. Tyler Mumley submitted comments uh, expressing concerns about the zoning change, section 340. So if he's here, I'll hand the mic off to him. Go ahead, Tyler. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, Bob. Uh, yeah, Tyler Mumley here. I guess I want to start off by saying I'm, I'm sorry for uh, submitting the, this email to Dan at such an 11th hour in this review. I've been a part of the process reviewing the, the changes to the zoning rules, but um, was focused on other items of that. And 
uh, this didn't um, present itself to me until I was uh, working for a client to get a building application to build a, a single family house. And then Todd said that uh, I got to prove that it's not on 20% slopes. And I, I didn't see that coming. And that is part of the new rules. And so I uh, talked to Todd about it and, and dove a little bit further into those zoning rule changes and realized that uh, the, the changes to the environmental protection areas, uh, the whole the whole section was rewritten and I think it was done nicely. Um, the only concern is that there is you know, a few words added into the EPA section that says, and steep slopes uh, over 20%. And so basically lumps any land over 20% slopes that's part of any project in Morrisville to now require DRB review and approval. And uh, not that protection of steep slopes isn't a bad idea. Um, it's just that uh, it seems a little bureaucratic and, and maybe not super well defined. And so what's gonna, potentially what's gonna happen is uh, many more permits coming in front of the DRB, you know, for anything including single family house construction uh, simply because there's a portion of the land that's over 20% slopes. So um, I know, again, it's at the 11th hour here, but didn't know if there's a way to potentially strike that from the, the new rules and give it some more thought and some more uh, elaboration and, and definition or, you know, to simply just reconsider it. But uh, that's uh, that's my two cents. Thanks, Tyler. Todd, do you have comments about that or can you... Uh... Tell us how the planning board came about that. Sure. Um, the, so the language that's in front of the select board was really a um, compromise language. The Conservation Commission, Ron Stancliffe, must have come in front of the, select, from the planning commission seven times over the course of the spring and summer, and they were looking for 10-acre minimum lot sizes. And what the planning council decided to do instead, uh, they didn't want to single out one neighborhood and say no building with less than 10 acres, just this one neighborhood. So they decided it would be more fair to do something townwide. So they came up with this compromise language with the, uh, with the, with the genesis of the Conservation Commission proposal to uh, regulate steep slopes. What this bylaw would do is it requires DRB approval for any time there's a building site uh, outbuilding site, a septic system, or a commercial parking lot, a commercial building on slopes that are 20% or greater as defined on ANR's map. The, um, it doesn't say you can't develop these properties, it just sends it to the DRB for DRB review. So in effect, what that, what that does is that adds a month of hearing time for projects to go to the DRB for steep slope consideration, and obviously the cost for uh, uh, engineering or site plan, so Tyler will make more money off this uh, being one of the main engineering firms in town, um, but basically it just doesn't allow me as the administrator to grant a permit, it requires DRB review. It doesn't say you can't develop your land, it's just it's an extra, it's more process and more review. That's really what the bylaw does for the steep slopes. It just seems kind of strange. Oh, sorry, Judy. Seems strange that uh, you know initially they wanted a 10 acre minimum lot size, and the concession was to go to a 20 percent grade or or less. They're two different things. Sometimes when you make sausage, it's interesting what comes out the other end. I guess that's the only way I can describe it. Because what's conservation? To give you some background. Conservation Commission was trying to conserve the, the, the steep slopes of Elmore Mountain. They were using large lot sizes to do it. So they were basically saying, we want 10 acre lots so people aren't gonna develop on the steep slopes. And what planning said, if you're really interested in steep slopes, let's protect steep slopes because we don't have any protection for steep slopes. So they made it. They made the proposed zoning change much more acute than it was. Gary, you wanna chime in on that? I know it's in your Todd, is, is Elmore Mountain the a 20% slope? I'd, li I'd like to do a picture of it. Some of it is. Um, do, you, do you guys screen share it all? I can send you an email right now showing town-wide steep slopes. I have that map prepared in case anyone wants to share it with people or look at it. Yeah, I remember I owned some property on the backside of the lake 
on the mountain, and I think that was a 19% grade. So under this law, I wouldn't wouldn't have been able to build up there. So interesting. Anyway, Gary. Yeah, he's not saying you can't build. Just saying it's going to go before DRB. Right. Adds right. another layer of red tape. It does. And that's what Tyler, you're concerned about, right? The bureaucracy. Yeah. Also, just putting the you know the undue burden on you know somebody that's just trying to get a, a house constructed. You know, and, and a part of their land is twenty percent or more slopes. It just means that they have to figure that out and figure out, you know, and also have to go in front of the DRB, fill out the application. You know, maybe they hire a surveyor, maybe they hire an engineer. Uh, you know, and they have to figure these things out, and it's just more burden on them to to do something pretty simple. Um, whereas, you know, typical typical land development is is already going in front of the DRB. Right, so they're already gonna, they're already going to look at those things anyways for the bigger projects. It's just uh, this seems like something that's going to hit, you know, the, the the smaller person who's just trying to get a house built or something small done. And uh, if I could, I guess I'd also say like you know even in uh, I was on the the Stowe DRB for many years, and and even Stowe doesn't have a steep slopes requirement. Um, you will find that in a place like uh, like Hyde Park and Elmore have both adopted steep slope regulations and they're and they're very restrictive um and 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 but it's not just included as like a part uh, a simple section under a simple wordage under a different section it's there's a whole section they have in their rule book about steep slopes and it's very restrictive and and uh, very well defined also whereas i think in this situation the way that we've added the way the steep slopes has been added into this revision to these zoning rules uh it's it's just very a very large envelope that just basically takes anything that's over 20% slopes and says you have to get DRB approval. And so, if there is a real concern about steep slopes, then I think it, I think it needs to be addressed um, more accurately and uh, critically. Because again, I, I don't think it's the intent to simply just put a blanket, uh, you know, restriction on all 20% slopes for for anything that happens. But if it is, then you know. So be it, but again, I, I think it just needs a little bit more vetting. Yeah, Judy, do you have a comment with that? You started to. Oh yeah, I, I asked Todd, I, I would just want to have a visual. I'm wondering also, is the one of the purposes is to protect the Vista? No, that the, the real purpose of this, uh, well, the Conservation Commission wants less development. Um, they don't want to see new house sites, so they would, and they want to protect steep slope and for the terms of uh, soil conservation, so there's no uh, there's no water quality issues with runoff. I personally, I've been here more than 10 years now, and I've not seen a house site where there's been a blowout and we've filled a stream with silt or runoff. Um, maybe that happened before me, so I'm not exactly positive what we're trying to solve here with the zoning proposal. But it's it's intended for water quality issues. This is not erosion into streams and uh, soil stabilization. Um, but again, I in the 10 years I've been here, I haven't seen those issues pop up. So uh, maybe they have been earlier, and maybe there've been issues before I was here, I haven't seen all that. Well, I know there's, uh, some, there's regulations on uh, building above a certain elevation too. I know Elbert Elmore has that. And, but there again, it's still, uh, it's still totally different than a 10, 10 acre minimum lot size. But to me, it's just, Strange. Gary. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the concept. The concept. Go ahead. Sorry, Eric. I, my, I, I just want to throw my two cents in there, Bob. This feels like a backdoor move for the conservation. Uh, I, I don't like that. If there's a specific reason why the 20% slope should be reviewed by DRB, then then I'm willing to listen to that reasoning. But if this is a compromise, then it turns that's a, a backdoor means to get to their end of, of conserving land. And I, to, I mean, that's contrary to my belief where development in Morristown, as long as it's done, uh, you know, with our zoning, we have plenty of zoning, plenty of uh, bureaucracy there to protect uh, our, our, our vistas and our, our community. I just don't see the need for this. Um, I wouldn't be against seeing it, and with, uh, like Tyler said, let's have some more review. 
find out what the specific concern is of a 20% grade or higher and uh, deal with it like that. But it, it really, the way it's presented, it sounds like it's a uh, backdoor means to another end. Go ahead, Gary. Yeah, I've, I've talked to a few landowners that this uh, encompasses, and none of them are very happy about it. Um, they were very unhappy about the 10 acre proposal. Uh, they feel it should be up to the landowner to be able to regulate their own land if, if they want to sell, um, you know, a parcel smaller than 10 acres, they should be able to do that. And it's also, it's always been my personal opinion uh, that even two acre zoning is too much in some areas of town, especially the areas closer to town. Uh, in the 20%, Tyler, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that uh, like septic systems, either, I think septic systems are restricted on slopes of over 20%. Is that correct? That's correct. The state wastewater rules say so you can't con cannot construct a wastewater system on slopes more than 20% on newly subdivided lots. And that's uh, subdivided since like 2004. So there's already that restriction in place at the state level for wastewater systems. Yeah, I would, I would think that, I agree with Eric, I think we're governed enough, uh, in my opinion, uh, because uh, you couldn't put a septic system on the 20% slope anyway, uh, because uh, even if it didn't come under the local zoning, you'd still have to get a WW permit and uh, which is not allowed on slopes of 20% or greater. Uh, I mean, you could you could probably build a house. 20% slope is, is pretty steep. Um, you can always, if you get the, if you get the property, you can always wind the road back and forth and, and get to a level area where you can put a house and or a septic system or whatever you want. I mean. Uh, on a plateau or something. Yeah. You can, yeah. It's, My I, I'm not a, I'm not a big favor of the, of this as it's written. The consideration I think about is the safety one, like fire truck, getting a fire truck to, or or rescue, you know, or police. That's the only thing I can think of. But I, I, I don't agree with that. When I first read it, I, I was hoping it would come up for discussion, but I'm not in favor of it either. Todd, how much is, how much of a problem? Is it to strike that part out of it and then give some further review and you know add something in there at some point? It's not a problem whatsoever, Bob. It's harder to change things once they're worn. We're at the finish line here. So if you swap something out for something else, you gotta rewarn and start some of the process again. But if you just want to leave this part out and proceed with the rest of the zoning change, you just cut this, leave it on the cutting room floor, as I like to say, and move on. So if this isn't ready for prime time, that's okay. You can just consider the rest of the zoning bylaw. Uh, when you make a motion to vote on it tonight, you vote on the zoning change as proposed with the exception of withholding a vote on the section 340 or 320 environmental resource area. That's what I thought. Brian, we haven't heard from you yet. What, are you, what is your opinion? I agree with you. I think we have plenty of restrictions already. Okay. All right, uh, is there any other um, issues or considerations or input? Elise, you're out there. Do you have any comments? Not on that, no. Thank you for asking. Not on that one. Why don't I get back real quickly? So I'll do the rest of this quickly. D was codify existing treatment of temporary structures. That's housekeeping. It's just basically codifying what I do now. D, uh, ZA, or, uh, renewing permits or not, it's what I do now. It's housekeeping. Uh, reword accessory apartment regulations was uh, reworded slightly per the last uh, discussion with Gary, but that's really just housekeeping at this point too, uh, unless Gary wants to chime in there. Uh, F is campaign signs 60 days prior to the election. Right now it's 30 uh, with the mail-in voting. People are voting, I think, 48 days before the election this year, so there were 18 days where me as your uh, ZA was not, in theory, should not have been allowing campaign signs and taking them all over town. 
I did not do that. And that's a really bad position to put your ZA in when there's no campaign signs allowed and people are voting. So this expands from 30 day allowance for campaign signs to 60. Uh, and then we're on to G. G's the other proposal that I'm expecting. We're not to Alicia, sorry Elise, but G's the other proposal expecting to get some comments on. It's um, hydrant locations, wet and dry. And the dry issue is with major rural subdivisions. So I know, I think Denny wanted to be on the call. And I know Gary's got some comments on the requirement for dry hydrants and major rural subdivisions. Denny, you want to chime in? I don't want to hear the problem, sir. No, you had some comments for Gary. Yeah, it, to make a, a dry hydra part of the conditions of allowing a, a subdivision, to me, it is kind of overstretching the bounds a little bit. I know it, it's great to be able to have that, but the first prerequisite is you got to have some water. And the second is you got to have ground that will hold it. And some of these subdivisions have neither. Some of them may have one. Um, like an area may have a, a brook running through it or something, but you can't you can't run a whole brook right into a sure. pond. Uh, Unless you have a pond, yeah. Right, and. Uh, and also, I, under, I understand the chief's reason why he would like that, but I'm not sure it should be mandatory and uh, involved in a subdivision south of town and we're able to get permission. There was no way you could put a dry hydrant on the property anywhere. But we were able to get permission to put in Ryder Brook to satisfy the conditions on that permit. But going forward, I'm not sure that it should be a prerequisite to being able to get a... Con well, it's been a prerequisite for a while. I know, I know. I worked with one of the committees to reword it. Um, most of that can go back to NFPA versus having jurisdiction as far as the water supply. The more hydrants we have per number of houses helps with our ISO rating. It affects every taxpayer in Morrisville. And most of the dry hydrants, we are actually a dry hydrant, have either been a pond in the area where they have duck one and clean it. So if they're having three, four structures, that is when it starts to get the water required. Now, if you want to put in two houses on a little division, that's fine. The biggest mistake we have in town is Oak Ridge Estates and the one just before it. At that time, this was in place, and the chief at the time worked enough to do nothing. So now we got all their nice houses out there with no water. So, oh, I mean, you guys are the ones that are going to have to tell the taxpayers at town meeting that their homeowner's insurance is going to go up. I mean, this whole hassle started with this one south of town. And I deal with the other two contractors in the village. I ask them they need a hydrant here, hydrant there. It's not an issue. But apparently, this particular contractor, who I know what it is, Apparently it's an issue. So I don't want to see what we've worked to do between the fire department and the water department to get our ISO ratings mid-level. All our hydrants are included. It all adds a little tenth of a percent that helps people with homeowners. I have more people calling me insurance companies from Sterling View, Sterling Valley. How many trucks you got? How long is it going to take to get there? Where's your nearest water? So I usually end up sitting at the firehouse typing up a lift. So this whole process 
isn't a question of making a payment of a buck for a contractor. It's a bigger picture. Now, I mean, water like we hear 200 wet hydrants. We're working with them now so they can get on a maintenance schedule because we got hydrants that don't work. You know, like I said, if we can get within a half a mile of this development with either a wet hydrant or a dry hydrant, that is going to help the people of Marsville better than not having it there. So, I guess it's really up to you guys who make the decision. Can you have us have something in and it says, you know, a dry hydrant where water is available? Because I understand what Gary's saying. If there's no water available, you're not going to put a dry hydrant there. And the, That's the what developer is not going to half mile. Right. That's what's covering. That's what you're saying. Yes. That's one of the changes I need. Because that was one of the things was that they, there wasn't really a distance. So, working with that board, we kind of come up with the distance. What is the... I mean, it's either that or we're going to rely on people aid. Rely on them. For tankers. Yeah. But it's the quicker, just like tonight. Or the nearby ponds, wherever they are, or whatever. Wet hydrants. They knocked it good. But some of our dry hydrants are summer and winter. Some are year round. Some are only good in the summer. You know, because the town does what they can do to help us if it's on the main town road and kind of swing in to make the pass so a truck can get in there. Like, like, like my pond. It gets to it easy. Yep. Well, I mean, tonight we're showing them back and forth on the fire apps. No, because the pond we would have used was an excessive. You could have gone right to mine. So which that. one would have been quicker? You know, I mean, it's uh, a stop development. Right. And we're tired we have to get our eyes already from a nine to a five. Yeah. You know, people, they'd have to call their insurance companies to see the difference. You know, if it was a nine, what was their bill going to be? Right. You know, gonna be. That's nothing I can tell you. I can't tell you right. how much you're saving. Right. I can't tell how much I'm saving. Right. Once you type in your zip code, that pops up. All I can say is to better protect these developments. Been here for a while. Most of them don't have a problem. I'm not saying it's easy everywhere. But the biggest problem is if we change that wording, I'm going to have to fight every development that goes in. Oh, we got no water bill. Oh, we got no water bill. So they go to the whole dry hydrant system or wet hydrant. Like I said, it's up to you guys. I'm just giving my opinion because yeah. I am one of the taxpayers that get to use dry hydrants with my people. But I can't tell you what's going to happen down the road if we do away with them. The development starts on what your insurance company. Right. Can I hear from the of the board? Hey, Bob, it's Eric. Go ahead, right, Eric. So, just as a reminder, what Todd said earlier about the other stuff, we we aren't able to change language tonight because there's the whole warning process. So, this right. either goes through as it's written or it, it stays on the cutting room floor to be re revised or looked at more closely. I'm just right. putting that out there for you to understand. Uh, I I hear I hear and see both sides of this from the development and from the fire safety end of this thing. Uh, I and I, 
both sides have valid arguments. I would just say that one size fits all regulations sometimes doesn't work, especially the further out you get in the rural communities. Uh, and, and perhaps the town, um, in order to support further uh, construction and, and development, could spend some time, I'd be willing to get my time, looking into uh, sites, homes that already have ponds existing to try and come up with some sort of a, in effect, a mutual aid agreement for the use of their pond in different areas that, that might help us out in the long run. That's just an idea thrown out there. Yeah, Dan's got a comment. The dry hydrants we have out now, there may be two. It's a hard time, but these dry hydrants are accessible for any fire in that area. The hydrants don't go in just to their house. Right. Yes, they'll get the big attack rate as they got a dry hydrant within so many yards of their house. But if we need it down the road, I'll use earnings. I know we use that the whole time for Michael Pee's barn fire. These dry hydrants aren't just for them homeowners. They're for that area. I mean, even if somebody wants to build something and it's within a half mile of that hydrant, it's done. They never the board for two different meetings. They didn't want it. Tell me up front. Don't waste my time. Yeah. I don't like my time being wasted. Well, the half the half mile is I think makes a huge difference. It's stretched it. Listen, a half mile I mean, don't seem long until you're waiting for a truck. Oh no, it is you know, it, it's a little way to let mm -hmm. you know and when we were talking about it, it's like that was a good compromise from having it on site. No need to hydrant if it's a half mile. You would have a hydrant and go to tonight, it's going to work. I go back to the plane crash this year. They had to go to Best Street to find a hydrant that worked, a wet hydrant. That's why we've been in contact with the water department and trying to figure out I know which ones work and which ones don't. Well, they want us to do it. You know, I mean, well, it's up to them. At least all the hydrants, all the cities do it. Right. Because that's the problem. You turn the knob and nothing happens because it broke underground. Yeah. You're not getting water out. But in fact, there's still like hydrant within a half point. Yeah. All right. So, Bob, Do we have any more comments? Go ahead, Judy. Bob, I just, um, just to clarify what a dry hydrant is, I'm understanding that it's a hydrant that's been put maybe out near a water source. It doesn't have water in it right now, but it has access to the water. That's what it is. Dry hydrant is a six to eight inch piece of pipe. PVC that you'll see coming out of the ground, 90 down into the ground. And if you look behind it, there's a pond of some kind. That goes into the bottom of the pond in the middle with a strainer. We pull up with our trucks. We have to prime off of that hydrant to get the water from the pond to come into the truck. The wet hydrant is what you would see in town, where as soon as you hook up your truck, you spin the valve even a half times, and it automatically pressurizes water to your truck. That's the difference between a wet and dry. Get that, Judy? Yes, thanks for clarifying. Any other comments about this? Uh, do you want to go over any of the other uh, changes? Sure, this is pretty much it. After this, there's another language change for accessory department, which is housekeeping. 
And then there's the Fairwood Parkway zoning change, which a select board asked the Planning Commission to rush through, which is why Elise is on the call and probably some other. Do we have any comments about any of these changes? Elise, you want to talk about the density changes? Uh, I just want to know, you know, that everything was where we left it, which is that um, as far as the town or the village trustees were uh, intimating the last time we were at one of their meetings that they were voting in favor of this change to low density. And when we met with you guys, you were in favor of the change to low density. Just want to make sure everything's still on the same page. Nothing's changed. I'm still on you the same page. You and I are the only two looking at each other, Bob. <laughs> Brian, you said something? No, no, I'm all set. Do we have any other comments? No. Todd, so what are we Go ahead. Todd, you started to say something, Todd. Uh, I just said there's, I have no other changes to this. This is exactly what was torn. This down zones the neighborhood from medium to low, which simply means uh, no more duplexes allowed. Right now you can do duplexes or be single family homes only. And the minimum lot size, besides just a few small setback changes, the minimum lot sizes will go from the current 4,000 square feet per house lot to 10,000 square feet per house lot. And there's a map of the changed area. Uh, the dry hydrant language is on page 11 of the package I sent to the select board. And the map of what's getting changed, if you want to look at it, is on page 14 of the package. But it's pretty much as advertised. It should be pretty simple, I imagine. So, uh, I have, Bob, I have one simple question. Um, it's not exactly related to that, but they were finishing the water line on Payne Avenue here and Fairwood Parkway in front of us. And they ended up plopping, coincidentally, a hydrant right on the corner of my lawn. How does that get determined where, you know, what area needs a hydrant and, and who's going to, where it's going to go? I don't care. I'm just asking. What is it? Water department. The, the water department does that. Village water and light department. Okay. They determine where they're going to go. I was just curious because it's, it's odd that this, neighborhood has been established for this amount of time to all of, us, all of a sudden just decide, hey, we need another hydrant here. I just wondered if it's because anything had been built around or something or the density increased. I wasn't sure why would you put in a new hydrant. I was just curious. Maybe it's because you got a sailboat on your front lawn. Well, my front yard is not wet. It's dry. It's all sand. I'm at the bottom of Sand Hill. Go ahead, Denny. I believe Water and Light has a guideline from the same place that I have to have a guideline, which is at FBA. And on most of the hydrants, like on your main roads, have to be within 500 feet. So I know what they've been doing as they upgrade hydrant systems, water systems, because that's what our hydrants are, it's off our drinking water. Is they've been upgrading the different hydrants. Right. This is the first time I've heard of them adding one. So I would have to physically look to see where the nearest hydrant is to hers. Right. If it, they put it in to meet the 500 feet. It's right behind me on Peter Wilder's lawn. Yeah, I mean, it would have to see, but I know that's one of the guidelines they need to go by. Okay. So it's just. Yeah, so it's just something when they're doing the upgrade to the water lines in the in the town anyway, that's the time to put it in. I mean, that's what I assumed. Right. Because... Uh, Elise, Elise, can you hear me? Yeah, Tom. Yeah, uh, I can, Dan. No, this, yeah. is, this is your neighbor, Dan. Yeah. What they what they did, Elise, is they discontinued uh, the one that's up by uh, Ernie Piper's. They cut that one out when they, and they, oh. they, they deleted that one, and they moved it down by you. Didn't know that. That's what they did. That's what they did there. That Didn't one know. on Fairwood Fairwood Heights is uh, is gone. Ah, okay. That, that's what they did there. They didn't want to go up through that road and uh, do a bunch of work, so they just. And that's why yeah. you have it. 
Well, congratulations. What a bonanza. My insurance will go yeah. down now when I call them. <laughs> now, are we voting on our uh, zoning tonight? Uh, final yeah. vote? Or? Yeah, they are. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I'm listening. Thank you for your input. Okay. Thanks, guys. So, um, regarding the other two things, how do you want to act on those board members as far as the 20% uh, grade and the dry hydrant? I'd make a motion that we approve the zoning changes to include striking B, section 340, the steep slope section of 20% or more, and leaving the remaining changes as they are. Did everyone hear that? Yes. Yes. I second. Yes. I heard it. Is there any further discussion? All in favor by roll call, Judy? Yes. Brian? Yes. Eric? Yes. Gary? Yes. And I'm yes. You need a second? No, we have I'll a second. I'll second it. I'll second we, it. We had a second. Oh, I didn't hear it. No, it is. It's passed. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you everyone. To clarify, so we passed everything but the uh, slope Keep protections. Yeah, okay, uh, for the Fairwood Park neighbor, for the Fairwood Parkway neighbors in the call, remember this is the first part of your zoning change. The village trustees need to approve it too. That hearing is uh, Wednesday night via Zoom, and I believe uh, the hearing is at six o'clock. I think the trustees start at 5.30, but they have a few things first on their agenda. And that's it. Okay. Thanks, Todd. Thank Thanks. you, Todd. Thanks, Todd. Thank you. Okay, next. Discuss the appropriations policy. Uh, let's just kick this off for everybody. I know there's some general discussion out there about what's going on right now with difficulty in getting signatures. Um, I, I think another uh, caveat I'd like to throw in, we did have a, a service organization of protest, and which one was it? Next year? It was the youth center. The youth center? Um, they didn't have any programming last year, um, and they don't feel it's appropriate for them to come back and ask us for money that they don't need right now. But I think in fairness to them, we're ready to pull them off, then we'll really need to get a position to get back on in 2022 when things are maybe back to normal. Right. So we kind of want to throw all those things out there in front of the board right now. It's your policy. You can change it at any time. Um, there was a discussion the last time about how difficult it is to get signatures. So um, maybe we just want to make sure that you're comfortable with your policy. Um, and you might want to consider that if somebody doesn't want an appropriation for the draft, that you know, how would you get them back on? Do you are you going to make somebody that, for very legitimate reasons, doesn't need the appropriation this year, but would that go to the next year? Which they probably say, "Gee, that leave me on. I'm not going to go do that next year." Right. So. What What does the board feel about that? Do you guys hear that, Eric, Judy, and Brian? Not very well. Can you um, just um, go through it just briefly? Thank you. Well, an example is the youth center who gets an appropriation from us. They didn't have any program this year, so they didn't spend any money. And the worry is if, if they don't need the money this year because they didn't have a program, what about next year if they're, you know, if they're going to say no to the money this year, are they going to have to get a petition signed all over again? I'm thinking that we can say, you know, due to COVID, we're going to let it, let it slide. If you need the money, take the money. If you don't, um, next year, you don't have to apply again. I don't know if we can word it somehow. What, what do you guys feel? That would make sense because they, they might need it before the year's over. Who knows? I, I, pre I like that. This is Brian. I, I I agree too. I think um, definitely wouldn't want to make a hardship on them, and just because they can't use it this year. Right, Eric. 
I'm I'm in favor of that as well. I would. I'm just wondering if we should put a time limit on this variation, just that it's because of this year's COVID uh, that it, we don't carry this forward as a, a permanent policy. I was wondering that too, Eric. I wonder. We still don't know what's going to happen in the next 12 months either, really. You can you right. can easily make it just for for this town meeting. For this town meeting, yeah. That I would go along with. Can we write something up like that, or do we have to do a motion? Just make a motion to you know amend your your appropriations policy. Um, that if somebody does need the appropriation for this town meeting, next town meeting, they can be back on without a um, sufficient. Do you want to take a stab at that, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that in your motion that you say they need to notify us in writing that they don't want an appropriation for this town meeting. We need something in writing. I can't. Well, I think they're going to give something in writing, but just like this one, they, you know, if, if we appropriate it, you know, they, they, they're going to take it anyway. If right. they don't want it, they're going to contact us, just like what happened this time. Right. <laughs> I would recommend that the board make a motion. Uh, to allow um, social service agencies to decline appropriation for request for this town meeting um, and not require a petition uh, for town meeting in 2022. Was that your motion? Uh, that's exactly what I was. Second. Second that. Second that. Second. 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 Is there any further discussion? All in favor by roll call, Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Eric? Aye. Gary? Yes. And my motion is passed. Thanks for your help with that, Stan. Um, was there any comments? You know, I know that you know, there's some about the signatures. I mean, uh, electronic signatures, the board still going to require that to, to be on the appropriations this year? We kind of left in limbo. Yes. Um, you didn't have to come oh. here first, you know. <laughs> what was the question? I'm leaning on Gary tonight. Go ahead. Uh, shouldn't we have a little blurb on that somewhere? We talked about it, but I don't know. I know I read something somewhere too, but we were. Policies, current policies in packets. Right. But do we want to you, you, add that onto it or something? Well, I mean, you know, we, we don't talk there and I came to you before. You said electronic signature was gone. Right. this last time and we came to the conclusion that people had to get signatures. Yeah. Yeah, Brian, I, 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 it's unfortunate, I think, the program that the Q04 is absolutely worthwhile, but it's, uh, it would mean a complete change in our policy for the one year. I just opened, it opens a door that I don't think we need to walk through. 
Yeah, I think we all kind of felt that way. And yeah. I think we just wanted to be sure. Yeah. Brian. I agree. Judy. I think it's sad, but I I think we ought to leave it alone. Yep. Stay the course the way we decided last time. Okay. Yeah. We don't need a motion for that. Okay. Uh, move on to new business. Let's do that uh, site for court letter of support. Um, I, I have emailed out the letter before the planning council and the site for Site for is a new company that's trying to start in the area. They're applying for a loan, great uh, jobs uh, in more South. Um, this doesn't mean that they're going to be like us or in from. It just says that the, the town, select board, and planning council supports their uh, application to possibly get some loan costs. You guys uh, see this letter, Brian and Judy and Eric? I do. Is it, is it the yeah. letter from coming on the Conservation Commission? No, this is on the Mont Economic Progress Council for the site report. It's a letter of support. I think, uh, Bob, in the beginning of the meeting, we might have missed that addition to the agenda based on the complications of the microphone. Right. But it's in, it's in the packet. Yeah. It was emailed to everybody. I got it in my email and I got it here. Did you find it, Judy? I'm looking. I found it. Okay. <clears> Todd <throat> probably knows a little bit more about the company than I do. Um, but it's just a kind of shame. Do you want to chime in on that, Todd? Sure. I think there. I think the uh, business owners are on the call. Maybe not. Uh, Jasmine and Ryan on the call. Maybe not. Okay, so they're not on the call. I'll chime in. It's a, uh, they're a media company. Uh, they are located on West High Street right now. The DRB did a permit for their own business maybe three years ago now. And they're looking to expand and hire some employees. And that's why they applied for a state veggie grant in order to help fund that. Veggie grant is the Vermont Economic uh, Growth Incentive is a veggie grant. So. They've applied for funding. They're just looking for town support. I pretty much took the letter I wrote for the last um, company to apply for one of these veggie grants was MSI's edition when they uh, connected their two buildings, Stafford Ave. And I pretty much took that letter and kind of repurposed it into the letter for um, a downtown tech company. Sounds like a good idea to me. So I had no problem writing the letter. Oh, they're going to be located in a big Victorian at the end of that road. I, I'm not positive. I think that's where they've been now, where they're starting. I don't want to speak for them. That's where they have a permit for right now, but I know they're actively looking at other sites if they get this money. I think if they get the money, then they can expand elsewhere. For right now, I think it's a home business, but uh, I don't want to speak for them too much. Thank you. Thanks, John. So we need a motion for this, for letter of support? Yes, please all rise the chairs. I'll make a motion that we approve the letter of support and have the chair of the select board sign it. In second. Favor of I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor by say aye by roll call, Judy. Aye. Brian. Brian. Are you there, Brian? His mic's on. Eric? Aye. Gary? Aye. Motion is passed. Okay, next. New business. Approve appointment to the Morristown Conservation Commission. We have that. 
Jessica, I can make the, yeah, I make a motion. We accept Jessica Inga to be a um, member of the Conservation Commission. I, I appreciate her letter. I really like what she had to say, and um, I think she'll be a good addition. Sounds good. Uh, so I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Eric? Is there any further discussion? All in favor? I, 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 what's that? I, I just wanted to know. She in her letter she mentioned the fact that she found she had some free time. She also has three children. I'd like to know how she does that. <laughs> <laughs> Good at time management, must be. It must be. <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to apologize for probably um, messing up her last name. Zenga. Zenga. It was close. All right. All in favor by roll call, Judy? Aye. Brian? I think Brian's asleep out there. Eric? Aye. Gary? Aye. And I'm aye. Motion is passed. Next, review TA job description and job ad. Well, we sent this out you know, a couple of weeks ago for the, the job description. Um, you know, I think the only things that I can see that need to be changed um, were service and highway superintendent. Of course, Kevin is doing that now. Okay. Um, and I, under on the second page, um, it says bachelor's degree and appropriate exists, but I would change that bachelor's degree or um, comparable experience or appropriate experience. That's better. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. Bob, just so you know, we got a little bit of an echo from Dan because he's so far away from the microphone. Yeah. I, I, I missed the first, the changes that he made to the job description. Well, do you want to say them again? Yes, Eric. Um, the first one is um, delete the section on services highway superintendent. Yeah. Okay. And, and the other one would be um, on page two it says bachelor's degree in appropriate discipline. Change that to bachelor's degree or appropriate experience. Okay. Um, the rest of it, I think, is kind of up for you guys. Um, I think it, of course, it doesn't cover everything that I do, but I don't think there's a job description that can't cover everything. Right. For anybody that works for a town, quite honestly. Exactly. Is there any comments on the board about this? Is the candy dish going to be required on the desk? The candy dish going to be required. You'll have to talk to uh, the staff about that. They seem to be shaking their heads yes. <laughs> what kind of candy might have to be negotiable? <laughs> Do we we don't need to make a motion on this. I'm going to re rewrite the job description and bring it back to your approval. Yeah. Do. I don't think we need to add anything more to it right now. That's all. We don't want to scare people away. And then there's the ad um, that kind of lays out a time frame. Yeah. Where will the advertisements be placed? Um, we'll place it locally. Generally speaking, what I do is I place them on Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns website um, because that attracts a lot of candidates or people looking for municipal positions. Um, go to that website to look for them. It looks good. Any comments about the ad? Hope we can find someone just like Dan. It's only 
want it. I know. Too bad we can't clone you. All right. So we'll go with that. Next is uh, review, review and approve workplace stabilization grant for the EMS. Bill. Hi, good evening. Hello. Um, as you're aware, um, there were some previous, uh, and it should be in your packet, there's a cover letter uh, yeah. and the, uh, the disbursement sheet. Um, there were previous hazard pay grants uh, that were all encompassing and included some EMS staff members. Um, uh, in those two previous ones, when we were when we applied, we were uh, not approved because we were a political subdivision of a state, i.e., a municipal agency. Also, a municipal agency that has some volunteer staff, and both of those classifications were uh, removed from the previous hazard pay grants. Um, back in November, uh, we became aware of a uh, EMS workforce stabilization grant that was being administered by the EMS office, uh, and uh, the requirement was to have uh, licensed EMS providers who had served from March 13th through September 15th. Uh, we applied for that. It was a pretty simple process, and we were awarded uh, uh, the grant in the amount of $32,214, which was uh, $1,534 for each person we submitted. Uh, subsequent to that, then they gave us some guidance on how to uh, disperse that money. Um, uh, the guidance was uh, uh, they had to have, they had to have actually physically gone to a 911 call. So that eliminated one me one member who had covered a shift but did not have any calls. Um, and then we prorated some two other members who had covered shifts but not the minimum like everybody else on the staff. Right. Uh, we took their funds and dispersed it among the rest of the staff. Uh, 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 so that's why we're up in uh, um, uh, the seventeen hundred dollar range for this yeah. grant. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, so this is money coming from the state from a FEMA approved grant uh, that uh, I believe we already have. We have the money. We have the money already, and what we're uh, what we're asking for is disbursement to staff uh, based on the attached list. Okay. No, I thought it originally came. No, I think this was the. The original. It's Department of Health. Health care. Health care worker. Yeah. Exactly. I, okay. It was, it was money that came to the state. I think it's called Cures Grant. Yep. Okay. All right. What was the FEMA funds? FEMA funds was one that we had problems with because we weren't eligible for FEMA. Okay. My my bad. Okay. Yeah. But the approval, just so we get these. The right. I just need. I just need. We're just requesting approval of yep. the disbursement as it's outlined on the list. Okay. Gary. Well, I make the motion that we approve the disbursement of the grant funds allocated to Marcel EMS as outlined in uh, in our packet. Okay, I have a motion. Is there a second? Second, Dan. I'm hanging up. Okay, Judy, you've got that. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? Just so everybody understands, you know, we've had discussions with Bill about this. These funds are not going to go through payroll. Right. Um, they'll, they'll be dispersed. <coughs> they'll be given a 1099 at the end of the year. Right. This year, they'll be given a 1099, so everybody's responsible for their own taxes and everything out there. Right. Just so everybody understands okay. that. Yep. All right. All in favor by roll call, Judy? Aye. Thanks, Bill, for doing this. Brian? Yes, if you can hear me. Yes. Eric? I, I'm going to give you an I at the same time putting out two cents to Bill. This is uh, a, a yet another example of the leadership he provides, and I very much appreciate him looking out for his people. Yes. Gary? Hi. All right, the motion is passed. There's Thanks. no name. Thank Thanks, you, Bill. Hey, Bob. Yes, sir. Uh, Dan texted me to see if I could hear. 
I lost you on my iPad, the, the voice. I can see you, but about, I got on my phone. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. We got to roll with it. We might have to send out smoke signals pretty soon. <laughs> or climb the telephone pole to tap on a wire. All right, next. A point fire chief, Denny. What's the story? Well, thanks to the governor, we can't have a meeting. Because even though we could be part in a classroom, part in a bay, I guess they don't call that two separate buildings. We're not in a corporation, so you can't fall under the have to have a meeting because we're a business. So as of tomorrow, with no meeting, we can make a motion. Oh, you go for it, Brian. Second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor by roll call, Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Eric? Aye. Gary? Aye. And I'm aye. Motion is passed. Next, reallocate uncompensated absences fund. Well, what I'd like to do is to have the board table to the next two um, items until after we get to a bus review, which is going to make a lot more sense. Okay, that's uh, uh, what I wondered. We'll move those to the end. Okay, next is Budget review. Review the capital budget. Tina, you want to talk about that or no? You want to help us? You want to help us? I can, yeah. Um, if you go under the capital section in your book, yeah. the first thing you'll see is the fire capital equipment fund. Yes. And if you look at the highlighted area, You'll see that we intend to take, or this proposes to take $200,000 out of the fire capital equipment fund to buy a new water tank. Yes. So that we don't have to raise tax dollars to do that. We already have this money in the fund, and we will after July 1st. Mm -hmm. It's a one cent tax. Right. So that's the first uh, thing. Mm -hmm. If you go to the next page, you'll have the highway capital equipment fund. Yes. And the highlighted area, again, is what you're looking for. In our budget, we propose to buy a new tandem and a new single axle, mm -hmm. of which we're going to take 50000 for each truck out of the equipment uh, fund. Right. So it'll leave about 53800 in that. And, and that's what the proposal has been. Okay. And 
after that, you, you start getting into the actual combined capital plan. Um, the general government one, those are just payments that we're making. Those are the loans we already have. Right. And as you can see, it's the last, let's see, the paving article loan ends on in uh, May of 22. So right. that's good. Yeah, it is. And the next page is a highway. Um, the first item on there is the $67,000. That will take 50 of that out of the capital equipment fund. So we're only actually raising taxes, you know, for the difference. Yeah. yeah. And then, and it's the same with the one that's 62,300. We're taking 50,000 out. So you're only raising 12. Yeah. But the other ones, the other two, the 52,300 and the 42,000, those are loans we already have. Right. The two trucks down below, the one for 16,6 and the 14,000 are proposed new vehicles, but we are not going to take money out of the capital funds for them. They're um, not big ticket items like the tandem and stuff, so we are going to just put that in the regular budget. Okay. And yeah, and then the other one on the on the bottom, we have the, the sweeper and the freight liner. Those are just regular monthly paint for yearly the payments. Oh. Yes. So that's the highway part. I think it's important to note when you're trying to get on the cycle as we've talked before, where we're looking at the warranties on the equipment and trying to get in that. Where it'll take a couple of years to get there. Yeah. You know, so that the warranties. Um, can start to cover more of our repair costs than what we're spending down so far, you know, even this year with the highway department. Just anticipation, we, we were able to lower our maintenance funds because more of our vehicles will be under warranty. So we're, we're still kind of working that way. That's great. The next page is the police. Um, there's a proposal to lease one, uh, well, the Dodge Charger to replace the 2014 Impala. And then the other payments are ones we already have leases with. Mm -hmm. You guys like to have one EQ that's a car? Yeah. That's uh, a yeah. 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 Well, of course, Ron on that. He primarily runs it all on now. Yeah. That's what his wish is. Well, his wish is that for another stand. And does charge it on the stand. He's going to have a police car. Questions on this capital budget that Tina's talking about? 
No, Tina, thank you so much. It was very easy to understand. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm, I'm glad. We worked hard on it. We all did, so. It's very easy to understand. All right, you want to talk about the overall budget? Yes, I think that the last meeting, the, the uh, more press kind of desire to get underneath 5%. Um, so, um, Tina sent out an email to department heads. Department heads went back and looked at what they could do. So, uh, you know, everybody kind of cut what they felt like they could. Um, but I think we were able to look at some stuff internally for what we do. And that's the reason why I put the motions that are in front of you, where one of the bigger line items, and it's something that has to be funded in any way, was the uncompensated um, absences. In other words, for people when they leave or whatever, um, selling their vacation time back, you have to pay that when they leave. Um, that was an $85,000 line item in the budget. And we were able to look at funds that we have already internally um, and take, in particular, the infrastructure fund and some of the sales of the property. We bought the property, we sold the property, and we've had some money actually come in from the state and the highway department. And you kind of look at that overall fund. What we can do is we can take $85,000 from the infrastructure fund and move it to the uncompensated absences fund. And then that eliminates that $85,000 in taxes that needs to be raised next year. It, it does downsize your infrastructure fund, you know, to roughly 57000 something like that. But that's kind of okay right now because we don't see any projects other than the come parking on. lot um, that could come up. And that was probably between thirty-five and $40,000 for what you would need in cash. So you still have enough cash to do that. Um, the other one that we were able to, to really reduce was the summer program. We didn't have a summer program last year. So we had $38,000 really still setting in reserve for them. So there's really no reason to raise $20,000 since we already have the money set aside to do that. Right. So with everything that we were able to kind of break down, that's the reason why motions are in front of you to move from those funds. We were able to reduce the budget down to a little over five percent. Um, I have talked to Kevin. I have talked to Eric, and I think everybody agrees with me. Um, if the board wants the budget any lower, the next thing that we would have to cut to, to do anything substantial this year would be the uh, new position in the highway department. Because um, we looked at the equipment, you know, maybe can we cut something? But I don't think it does you any good right. because. You're just going to increase it. It's not a lot of money in this year's budget, plus then you're, you're driving your maintenance costs right back up. Uh, so it really doesn't do much good to cut anything from that. So really what you're doing is you're, you're, you're cutting. The only way you can cut now to get it lower um, would be to cut that extra position in the highway fire or potentially only fund it for a half year. In other words, don't hire somebody until January time frame. Something like that, where you're cutting down. I think Katie said the numbers would be about eighty-seven thousand. Well, it's eighty-nine thousand dollars to hire a highway person, including all of the benefits, which is about a, it's more than a penny, it's more than one percent. So, but if we if we don't hire somebody, well, we're gonna have a lot more overtime. You know, like the EMS had to deal with lots of overtime and police, everyone. We were just, yeah. you know, those, those are the, you know, the, the, the ups and downs with going into that. But I think everybody kind of feels like if, um, if, if we want to get the budget any lower, that's what we have to go through next. I was actually happy to see that. I'm not happy to see an increase, but considering, you know, like the new, you know, the new lease of the uh, Fairfield building and some of the other things, it's not bad. If you look at the detail, You'll see um, the first chunk of stuff with dates are things that change that you know we we just fixed later on. Underneath that, you'll see all the department head changes, and you can see how they cut their budgets. And they did a really good job of going through and and really taking a hard look, particularly Denny, at a lot of the things that they had. So we were able to take a budget that was proposed initially at 7.7 percent .7 down to 4.9 percent. Mm -hmm. That looks a lot better. And as long as we're not 
just kicking the can down the road and we're going to pay, pay more later, you know. Any comments on the Dan, board? Dan, it's Eric. I got a question uh, in reference to the municipal parking lot revamp. Is that slated for this coming summer or the year after? It probably wouldn't be until next summer. Anyway, right now, uh, you know, one of the things that was really triggering that, I mean, it's something that we need to do, don't be wrong. But it wouldn't have been this summer. Um, well, we could have done this summer, but the, the, um, the, the, the apartment building or the development that was being built that was going to help us pay half that is definitely not happening this summer uh, because they didn't get their funding approval uh, from the fall. So, um, so when they they're, they're going to probably continue to reapply um and having a down, designated downtown will help with that in future applications for them um but they did not get funding for this round which means that project won't start this coming this year i don't believe okay thank you any other questions brian or, Cody? or gary i'll say all set. Thank you. Yeah, I want to thank thank everybody. Thanks, Department Heads and Tina and Dan for working hard hard on it. It looks good to me. Doesn't look. So is this the budget that you want put before the voters at yeah. town meeting? I just want to make sure because I don't want to send it for town report. <laughs> I can live with it. Um, what do you think? Well, I, I certainly don't think we ought to cut a position out of highway. No. Um, because we're getting more and more maintenance all the time. Yeah. And the other thing, yeah, I mean, it was proven, Bell proved it with EMS that right. you had a position, you cut the overtime, and you you more than pay for that position right. over time. So, yeah, the, I think we're good, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it just seems to me, I, we know all our department has, they're not thinking we're rich, you know, you guys are always. Trying to sharpen it as much as you can. We know. We know. So well, I think it's been 27 years. It's been yeah, it's been 27 years since the position was hired in the highway department. And that's just another position. Yeah. If you think about all things that happened. Yeah. Um, in that time frame, I think they've done well to keep up without hiring too much else. I agree. How about Judy and Brian and Eric? I'm good with what was presented. Thank you. This Brian, I'm all right with that too. Yep, I'm good. Yes. So that means we won't have an extra meeting in January. So do we want to make a motion on this? Uh, these motions as presented, Gary. <laughs> Back here a little bit. You're working me over hard tonight. I am. That's because you're here. So that happens when you fall out, bro. That's what happens when you show up. Yeah. I just wonder, Richard, have you had any luck with any new no. any new people? No. I would think you'd be able to get some from Burlington pretty quick. <laughs> you're looking down there. I don't know. I think uh Maybe certain hard tune than I am. Seems like a lot of them are leaving the profession too. So we're not. Can't understand why. Yeah, I, all the all the positive press you guys get, I can't imagine somebody wouldn't want to join the force. Right, the, the glamorous job that it is. But uh, no, we haven't. Uh, no, you know, we just the the uh, the and of course, we, our desire is to have the whole trained, certified, level security right. officer. And because if we don't, even if we hire one today, they won't be on the road until a year from now. Right. So, right. So we're really trying. To, yeah, we have one scheduled to go to the academy in March still. So as far as I know, that's going to be moving forward. Well, there's still another position, and we've had nobody. I've never seen it like that. So, so. All right. 
Okay, with that being said, we um, I make the motion to reallocate 85,000 from the infrastructure fund to the uncompensated absences fund. And including that motion is uh, to move to allocate $66,854.03 from the 11 Old Creamery Road Fund to the Infrastructure Fund. Do I I'll second, second that. All right. Are there motion. separate motions or one motion? It's all one. The way he worded it, it's all one. Yep. And I have a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor by roll call, Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Eric? Aye. Terry? Aye. I'm aye. Motion is passed. Unanimous. All right. So liquor control. I believe we have some. So here motion to go I make a motion to be on the liquor control board. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Eric? Aye. Terry? Aye. We are now in liquor control. So, so we have an we, we do. We have one renewal for um, Slim Point, which is Riverbend Market for a second class license. Right, and I see Richard didn't have a problem with it. No. Thanks, Sarah. Make a motion to approve it. I have a motion. Second. Do I, have a second? I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye by roll call, Judy. Aye. Brian? Aye. Eric? Aye. Terry? Aye. The ayes have it. All, um, motion is passed unanimously. Do I hear a motion to come out of liquor control? So move. Second. Second. All in favor say aye, Judy. Aye. Brian? Aye. Eric? Aye. Gary. Aye. We are now out of liquor control. Boy, that's a lot of red tape. Next, approve warrants. Make a motion to approve warrants. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye by roll call duty. Aye. Brian? Aye. Eric? Aye. Terry? Aye. Can you uh, get Bob to sign all those since you don't have three people here tonight? Can you make that part of your motion? That was part of the motion, wasn't it? It's almost. Yeah, yeah authorize the chair to sign. Yes, that was part of it. Did the second say that also? Yes. Okay, motion is passed. Next here for so two things for me. Um, just so board members can check that out. Um, the proof point. Um, What's that? Did somebody? Go ahead, Dan. So the proof point for your email will be turned back on tomorrow afternoon, so it will start being screened. But once again, if you have problems with your email, please let us know right away so we can address it. Um, and I think the big thing is um, Erica will be leaving us this Thursday. Um, she is moving. Um, she has agreed she's going to work remotely for a period of time to uh, help us to get the town report together and do some things. Um, but Elizabeth is going to help in the office until such a point in time that we get somebody hired. So, you know, no. um, right now, things are going to continue. She hasn't actually officially resigned. She's going to a lot of things that she needs to do. She's only done our town report. She agreed to help us get through that and get some things, keep things moving for us as much as possible um, remotely because a lot of what you guys are doing on computers, you sign in from anywhere. Between her and Elizabeth, they'll be keeping things running around here um, until we hire somebody new. So, um, yeah. She's, she's, she's deserting us for a warmer climate, I believe. <laughs> 
It's not a dog. <laughs> I don't I don't blame you. Moving out of Elm Church of Eden. What a warmer climate. Yeah, I just can't take either. that's all I really have. Any questions for Dan, the board members? I just have a question about um, our next meeting is going to be on Tuesday at 6, and then the 25th, is that still at 6 o'clock? Well, I'm going to look at the 26th. The next one will be, yes, the Tuesday. Uh, thanks for mentioning that to me. So Monday, the Monday is, I thought it was the 19th. Um, Monday, it'll be Tuesday the 19th. Because Monday is a holiday, um, and then we'll probably have to have we will probably have to have a special meeting to approve the warning. Is that going to be the um, in place kind of in place of the town meeting? Oh no, not at all. That's just a sign and approve the warning. That's oh, not okay. an informational one. All right. When is the informational one? Um, I was looking at the four. Tuesday in February, I believe it's February 22nd. So I think we have one on the 1st and the 15th. I, don't, I can't see the calendar from here. Yeah, 22nd is the Monday. 22nd would be the information. It has to be within that 10 day period yeah, prior. Yeah, that's, that's a week before or a week and a day before. Yeah. Tell me. So Bob, we'll have a meeting the 1st, the 15th, and the 22nd? And the first. Yeah, the first, the fifteenth. Oh, and the first. Yep. Yeah. Of March. Yeah, first of March. <clears throat> yes. First, fifteenth, twenty second, and then first. Oh. That sounded exciting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any questions for Dan? Thanks, Dan. Next, select board concerns. Judy. Are you out there, Judy? I just want to um, thank Erica for her service and hope that wherever she's going, that she's going to enjoy herself and we'll miss her. And thanks to Elizabeth for stepping up and stepping in. Ditto, yes. Thank you, Judy. We're second the Yes. How about you, Brian? I have the same things. I want to thank Erica for what she's done and and uh, Elizabeth for stepping up. Also, I don't think we've got anybody we've dedicated the book to yet, right? Right. We got to get on that. Yes. I went through the list the other day that I had given to me. I could. I'm still having trouble trying to find the white person, so I thought I'd let you guys see if you had any ideas. Yeah, I looked through it too. Yep. We can and the other it. thing I want to say is Judy mentioned the, the paint on the highways. The other night I have the note, especially by Bishop Marshall. That line is so hard to see at night, especially if it's a little bit wet. I'm wondering if they got their paint at the dollar store or something. <laughs> the state thing is that you talking about the center line or the fog line? Oh. Just all of it. Yeah. So just Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I did. I did write to the state. I never heard back from them. No. Uh, I, I didn't notice in it. I thought it was my eyes, and I've been noticing it. And then when I see it the other night again, I said, "Boy, that it is bad." So I just want to mention it's bad. See if anybody's got any other ideas. That's all I have. And thank everybody for working so hard on the budget. Thanks, Brian. Eric. Yeah, I echo my thanks to Erica. She's put up with my absent mindedness now for several years. And I appreciate her help and uh and finally getting me a code to the back door so I don't have to wait for somebody to answer it. And uh, I appreciate Elizabeth very much for the work she's done in the town clerk's office has been exemplary and I think she'll she'll do great uh, filling in there and give giving Dan a hand that he needs to keep his candy jar full too. And other than that I have no complaints. 
Sounds good. Gary, you have anything? I'm all set, other than, uh, you know, uh, recognizing Erica for all the work that she's done in the past. And I've known Erica for a while. Uh, I've worked on her house, her new house in Eden, and uh, we've always had a good relationship, and I know she'll do really well wherever she's going. Uh, Congratulate her on her move, and hope it yeah. works out. And uh, yes. And welcome Elizabeth Ford on board for taking over. Yes. Can I, I say the same thing? I echo the thoughts of our board members. Thank you. And good luck. Okay. When are you leaving? Uh, we roll out Friday morning. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, good luck. <laughs> Safe travels. All right, do we have any other business? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion is bad. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everybody.